All right, in this video, we're going to talk about maintaining security when it comes to uh, the use of social media uh, information systems. And this is going to mostly focus on a business that may or may not run its own social media platform, but whose employees are on social media, which these days is going to be most businesses. So this is going to focus on how businesses might try to maintain security when it comes to uh, organizational and employee use of social media. Now, I want to acknowledge up front that this does touch a lot on a debate that's being had in a number of circles regarding what amount of control a employer an employer should have on their employees private life uh, with one side of the debate talking about how employees represent the businesses they work for and thus uh, if they do something in their private life that could be bad then that might make the business they work for look bad so that so therefore, the business should be able to control what employees do in their private life. That's one side of this debate here. The other side of this debate is that workers should be able to have full privacy of their private life. A business that they work for should not be able to control what they do in their private life. There's that right to privacy, uh, that right to being able to actually act like a human rather than an employee in their off time. Uh, we have mandatory time off from work for a reason because 24 seven being an employee is harmful. That's the other side of this debate. Now, what I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to teach the curriculum as is. Uh, you know, I mean, where I see uh, any additional insight I can provide from my experience with technology or privacy or security research or any of that kind of stuff, where it's relevant for the discussion, I might add it in, but I'm going to stick with what the textbook is providing here, acknowledging the fact that this is a major debate that's going on, uh, acknowledging the fact that Given that this is a business textbook, they tend to lean more towards the side of uh, companies should be able to manage what employees do on their time off uh, side of things. And also acknowledging that social media might kind of complicate things a little bit with this debate because it could be free time. But also if you're acting, if you're trying to represent the company as well or even if you're not it it gets into really weird territories that that's why this debate is you know has been going on as long as it has so i want to just preface this video with all of that i'm just gonna go through what the textbook is talking about if you have a particular idea about all of this about the use of social media policies and the security practices talked about and all that kind of stuff if you have any thoughts and if you want to talk about it further um, ideally in a respectful way i am happy to talk about that further uh, through uh, different means of communication regarding the class uh, i think it's a very interesting topic uh, the way that social media interacts with all of that kind of stuff. Um, I certainly have my opinions on all of this, of course, but my job right now is I am uh, teaching the curriculum, so I will do that. Now, in the modern era, a lot of businesses encourage people to post on social media and identify themselves as being an employee of the company. It can in some way be free advertising. It could help in the recruitment, even if someone's not actively trying to recruit, there's a lot of possible benefits for that. But the uh, other side of this is that if someone is uh, publicly 
acting as an employee of a company and publicly identifying themselves as so, um, there are easily things that they could do that might harm the company's credibility or something like that and turn into a PR uh, thing, event. So a company might have a social media policy that delineates employees' rights and responsibilities regarding their use of social media. A lot of companies tend to use this, and this might include things like don't talk about things that we're doing that you shouldn't be talking about. That might be the, the furthest extent of it, or it might have some guidelines on how to make the company look you know, as good as possible when you've identified yourself with the company. Um, and a lot of bosses or managers or something like that will try to uh, have access to someone's social media. Not like logged in access, but more like look being able to look over their employees' social media to see if everything lines up with uh, you know, making the company look good and all that kind of stuff. Um, this might even happen in the hiring process is they might try to look someone up on social media and see if they can find them and see if they can look at what kind of stuff they're posting and if they would reflect well upon the company or something like that. So a lot of organizations have those kinds of relationship with social media and have a social media policy for their employees. Now, this is the Intel social media policy. Uh, they have three major guidelines right here. Um, disclose, protect, and use common sense. You disclose the fact that you are an employee of Intel. And you, you make that very well known uh, so that you might not get accused of like, or Intel even might not get accused of like, trying to do some like subtle uh, guerrilla advertising thing with social media or that there might be a bias or something like that. Like maybe it might help with trying to prevent claims of like not well disclosed advertising or something like that, which the it could be kind of serious uh, depending on if the FCC actually follows through on anything they do regarding it. But they want employees to disclose their relationship with Intel. Uh, helps build a good brand association if the employees are doing okay things uh, on social media. So that's a benefit. All that kind of stuff. The second uh, rule is to protect. You take extra care to protect both Intel and yourself. So you don't divulge like where you live or anything like that. Any information about yourself, personal information, private information. Um, you don't uh, share your password or account with anyone. You don't give uh, very sensitive details about your life out, all that kind of stuff. And you protect Intel in terms of intellectual property and processes and all that kind of stuff, because it'd be really bad if you uh, showed off the latest processor technology that they're developing and then online on Twitter and then AMD starts taking advantage of it or something like that. So you protect Intel and also yourself. And then there's also using common sense. Um, be upfront about any mistakes that you make you know, acknowledge it and make a commitment to get better. Uh, don't try to, um, don't, don't, don't try to, uh, bury mistakes or anything like that. Um, be professional, be straightforward. Uh, recognize that as a human, you are valuable and thus you might make mistakes. So when you're called out about it, actually say something about that and acknowledge it and commit to being better. That's the idea behind these three principles that Intel in particular uses. And companies might use something similar, they might use something completely different. Uh, but 
It's just an example of a social media policy here. Now, when businesses open themselves up to social media, whether it's through a social media team and official business social media page, or whether that is through their employees going out and being candid about being members of that business, um, there is risk that comes with it. And we're going to talk about the different types of risk here. Uh, so we're going to talk about user generated content right here, UGC on this uh, slide. Users can post anything on a social media site, which is known as user generated content. That's the whole deal with social media. That's the reason why anyone is on social media is for posting and for seeing other people's posts. And for that reason, they can interact with each other. They can interact with businesses uh, in the form of user generated content. Now there might be bad things that comes from user generated content from bad actors who are trying to or well either try to negatively affect stuff or might just be doing it uh incidentally problems here are going to be things like uh junk or harmful contributions so if someone um is interacting with a company and they say something that's really bad or meaningless or actually really harmful or something like that the um that can make things really bad for a lot of other people who might be participating in this engagement with the social media site and that can actually possibly say up on their page or in their that can be associated with like a post that they make or something like that and that could be a problem because that could harm other people or give other people a negative association with that brand so that's one form of external risk here uh, inappropriate content can also be really bad um, inappropriate especially in the sense of like not safe for work um, in any number of dimensions of content being not safe for work right here that can also provide a negative image towards the brand then unfavorable reviews um that is uh if, if uh reviews are publicly available to customers and there's a lot of really really bad um reviews out there there needs to be some action that needs to be taken especially if that company is using social media to uh you know push any products that have those bad reviews or something like that it could not look great on the company and then finally mutinous movements is a really interesting one because you can have people try to thwart a uh, company engagement through either engaging in a really bad way or taking things out of context or trying to purposefully paint the company in a bad light or all that kind of stuff really just trying to do everything to turn it to invert the uh social media presence of a company and turn it into a bad thing and maybe even try to run them off the site so a lot of risk can come from that now of course there's different ways of responding to problematic uh user generated content the first is to just leave it don't respond to it don't get rid of it just put it there leave it as is and that of course has the potential downside of uh everyone can see that problematic stuff and might have those bad inferences or bad um, associations or whatever like bad things could happen from that but you're not making the problem any worse by just leaving it so that can be an upside you can also respond to it although that can be tricky you know sometimes you can respond to it and you might actually be able to help someone with it you know you get a successful customer relationship thing going but there is a phrase on the internet called that goes uh don't feed the trolls by responding to an inflammatory content or something like that 
you might actually make things a lot worse. You might give the person who made that uh, a lot more motivation to continue doing bad stuff. Uh, and it, you might just explode the problem exponentially. So you have to be really careful about that. You really have to make sure that the person would react in good faith if you tried to help, um, which can be hard to determine online. But it's an option. Sometimes it does work. And then you can also delete it. Uh, you can delete uh, problematic user-generated content. You want to be careful about which stuff you actually delete, though, because if you're deleting bad reviews or complaints or something like that, you might be accused of censoring or trying to paint everything in a more positive image for you, trying to dupe people into buying your stuff. And that can actually get you into a lot of trouble, um, possibly even legally. Uh, depending on how egregious it is. However, deleting things might be an appropriate response for like inappropriate data or, or sorry, inappropriate content or something like that. It might be appropriate to do that if the, um, if the stuff that you're trying to delete is just inflammatory and inappropriate and just has no place being on a civil discussion about anything. So, that is another option. All of these are perfectly valid options, and each one of them has their strengths and weaknesses and their times which they should be applied and times which they shouldn't be applied. So a company would do well to keep it in the tool belt. Now we talked about external risks right here. There's also internal risks. Um, these are risks that are actually created within the organization that typically has to do with employees actually using um, inform like actually using social media. So there's information security risks. Uh, this could be employees actually sharing information that they shouldn't be either on purpose or accidentally on social media or through some other platform. Um, if they share enough personal information about them, uh, that could possibly cause its own security risk. So for example, the t textbook gives the example of um, a senior level employee talking about uh, their 20 year anniversary in Dallas and class of 1984 reunion at Central High School or remembering my honeymoon to Hawaii or all that kind of stuff. And all of those are actually kind of common uh, security questions or answer sec security questions um, that this person might put in. Because, you know, when, when you uh, log into a website and they want to really make sure that you are you, they will ask you very personal questions about yourself that theoretically only you should know. But there's a actually very common type of attack when someone has public social media or something like that where they actually give out that kind of information whether you know it's just posting naturally or whether they are tricked into giving out that kind of information by something that looks very um innocent like a a fun quiz or a post where everyone is commenting that kind of information like oh where did you get married or where did you have your honeymoon all that kind of stuff um and uh bad actors could potentially take all that information assemble it together into you know all the information they would need to answer the security questions and get into your profile this might be through something like uh looking forgot your password or logging in if they already have your password and then answering the security questions or something along the lines. Um, now this type of attack is actually why two-factor authentication is a thing. If you've ever had a website ask you for your phone number or a backup email or something like that, just in case you forget your password or something, that two-factor authentication essentially allows them to really make sure that it's you by directly contacting you and asking for confirmation that you are the person who is logging in or that you are asking for a password reset or something like that. Uh, 
it's a very secure thing and it's something I would recommend looking into if you haven't set that up on your email or banking or whatever. Now, corporate liability, we've kind of touched on. Uh, it's very possible for an employee to unintentionally or intentionally make their company look bad. Um, if they... Uh, if they post things that are harmful or if they make threats or something like that, or if employees leak some kind of really sensitive information that might end up looking bad on the organization. Um, I think especially in the case of employees purposefully or accidentally leaking like sensitive information, if they're doing things like, uh, you know, like working at a hospital and they click on a, a phishing link or something like that and then a whole bunch of like healthcare information gets leaked that would look really really bad on the hospital itself because their information security wasn't all that good so there's that risk of corporate liability there and then there's loss of productivity uh, simply from the fact that sometimes employees use social media on the clock that's uh pretty much all there is to that uh might waste time which means the business uh is paying an employee to do things that aren't work etc cetera, etc cetera. but social media access can be uh can lead to some amount of loss in productivity well that is uh the ways in which social media information system can provide, you know, sort of security issues, uh, things that should be looked out for when a business uses social media in some of their processes. Um, that's the last bit that I'm going to talk about here. There is this uh, section in the textbook on where social media is taking us and it could start to become outdated pretty quickly. Uh, they talk a little bit about changes in the market. Uh, people are leaving Facebook. People are starting to value privacy more and more and realizing that being actually presenting as themselves on social media can be harmful and are starting to go more anonymously, which, you know, Funny enough, the, the fact that people are more willing to be anonymous on social media can have its own benefits and downsides for the organizations that hire them based on, you know, employee identifiability versus um, the fact that it might be easier to paint your company in a bad light when they can't uh, do repercussions for that. But, you know, should the company even be looking at social media in the first place? Uh, again, that gets into that kind of debate. So, you know, if that is something that is interesting to you, I would recommend reading through that section, but I don't think it's necessarily something I need to make a video for. So I will call it right there. Thank you all very much for watching.